We had a great video. Can you return to a hotel? Yes, we did. What do you think, team? Do you think we could have a go at a similar one, Norm? Can you retire to an RV? And this is pretty serious. <laughs> yes, it is. We met two couples while we've been here in Portugal, and they both told us about their story. Um, and we wanted to share that with you because it is a solution to the ongoing global crisis in the housing market. And perhaps if you're looking at a way to release money for your retirement by selling your house, could you retire to an RV? What do you think, Kate? I think it's a great idea, Norm, that I think lots of people could be very interested in hearing what we've got to say. Me too, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the first one was really interesting. It was a couple that we met in Tavira who um, they actually jokingly said to us, hey, we got a great idea for a video for you. And they told us that they live on um, a community site and it's called Suncatchers Community But they started their story by saying they probably have the cheapest house in Canada, which sounds amazing. So, Oh, yes, they did, didn't they? And we were really interested to know how do you do this. So they went on to tell us that um, the community park that they are in, now you do pay um, an amount to join. Um, it's, it becomes 10,000 for one fee, 15,000 for another. So the total together is like 25,000. So that buys you into a housing cooperative. Yes. And the housing cooperative is based on a campsite of um, permanent mobile homes. So they're park models. Um, they have them for sale because people come and go. Mm -hmm. Or you can get a lot and you can put your own one on there. Uh, so this is an organized site in southern BC, uh, which they're part of. Mm -hmm. and, and as part of the community and the cooperative, you are expected to do an element of work and maintenance around the park. But this couple, they travel for what? Um, I, I think they said that maybe about five months of the year going to various places, maybe a month at a time. So they're back in their home place for maybe six or seven months. One of the advantages of having this site is that they live there for six months of the year and then they can travel for the other six months of the year, which and, sounded great. And that's how we met them in Tavira yeah. in the Algarve. Uh, they had been viewers of ours and we're very grateful to each and every one of you. So a housing cooperative in a mobile home, um, you can sell your house, release the capital and you can travel for half the year. I think one thing we should mention too, Norm, is that you can get one of these properties for around say 150,000 to 200,000, right. which when you look at the price of properties now in Canada is a very reasonable way of getting yourself a base to live in. And the property mm -hmm. tax is a minimum yeah. as well. So that was one solution mm -hmm. that they wanted us to share with you. How about if you want to be more mobile team? And this idea came about by another couple that we met, wasn't it, Norm? Yes, so this is Andrew's idea. So he basically told us that him and his partner decided they would like to go to Australia. So they went there. They did. And what they did was they actually bought an RV there and they traveled all around Australia and then before they left, they sold it. Now, this was an <laughs> old RV, so it's not top of the line. It, it was very much on a budget. But with it being an older RV, after six months, as Tina said, they were able mm -hmm. to sell it at a profit. So it didn't cost them anything um, to have six months of living expenses other than any site fees that they incurred. And then because it had worked out so well for them. They went to New Zealand instead of coming back to Canada. And 
they bought another army, <laughs> another old, old one. And, and the funny story was that they were saying that on some of these sites, when people saw them arriving, they would leave because it was, let's call it a vintage yeah. camper. <laughs> and the other thing too was that actually people were coming and dropping off food and things to help for them because I guess they kind of felt sorry for them, but they were doing something that was an adventure for them and they got to see lots of new places. So if you'd like to see Australia or New mm-hmm. Zealand and you're okay at driving on the wrong side of the road for North Americans, <laughs> that, that's a way of doing it. And living in RVs has become a thing. You can see that on YouTube. Um, there's also Hollywood has made movies about it as well when there's mm-hmm. the annual get-together in the US of all the RV dwellers. And there's lots and lots of people doing van life because rent and buying house. Yeah, it's just creeping away, isn't it? It's just getting too expensive. Either the rents are increasing too much or properties are getting beyond what people can afford these days. And it is sad that. It really is. So there's there's things like van conversions where people will go and buy an old delivery van that maybe has a high roof line um, and build their own apartment inside it and then drive it around. Um, In the US, there are apps which you can download, which will tell you free sites that you can go to so you don't even have to incur camping fees. Now, that's a good idea. And we did actually think too, Norm, didn't we, that this even could be an alternative to a hotel in the Algarve, is that you could actually get either buy or rent an RV and travel all around here, couldn't you? There are so many RVs that we see down here in the Algarve, a lot from Northern Europe, and the the great designs in Europe, they're a lot um, more economical because they have smaller engines. And as Tina said, how about buy yourself one, leave it in (laughs) Portugal, drive around Europe. You could drive around Portugal, Spain, Italy, maybe even get into Greece, yeah. all in your own RV, Yeah, no, rent, rent free. It's a very interesting idea because that also brings back memories to Norm of when we did our RV trip I know. <laughs> across Canada. It was awesome. It was amazing. We did um, an RV relocation trip. Uh, from Toronto to Vancouver. And so we did experience this. Admittedly, it was only in two weeks, wasn't it? But it was yeah. in, in uh, <laughs> the Canadian springtime, which is wintertime for everybody else. So there, yeah. was, there was snow on the ground. We yeah. did drive through some terrible snowstorms. Oh, yes, we did. <laughs> and there were no campsites open. So we just parked in shopping malls or Walmart car parks and and we had a great time and we were in something like a 30 foot it it was a Ford V10 engine in it so it was a gas guzzler but the dining area bumped out the bedroom bumped out so it was very comfortable it was like a small apartment yeah, and was, we, we were able to yeah. work in there with a the computer. It was very spacious. And um, the great thing was when we needed Wi-Fi, we'd either pull up outside Walmart <laughs> or A&W. Actually, we stayed one night in the car park outside A&W. It was great, wasn't it? We got Wi-Fi and they, everything. They, they left the Wi-Fi on all night. <laughs> and then we got breakfast in the morning from them. It was awesome. Yeah. So we, it, we have experienced it, albeit a very small period of time but it could be quite exciting and if if we were financially challenged or wanted a different lifestyle Mm -hmm. we could see ourselves doing uh, an RV Um, the only reason that we don't do that is because of healthcare and that we have to be in Ontario Mm -hmm. for five months of the year but for seven months you could travel Mm -hmm. the whole of the US and Canada and it would be a wonderful existence. So could you retire to an RV? That's a really interesting question, that, Norm. It really is. So if you've enjoyed this video, I'll link to another one up here. 
uh, that'll carry on the story of our RV adventure. So we hope that everybody is keeping well. And staying safe. And until the next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.